so before I start uh, to remarks, first, uh, thank you very much for a kind introduction. And uh, I would thank also Ramona for giving her time uh, you know, to organize this talk. And uh, of course, uh, to Ligia for, you know, for, for her efforts, this introduction and moderation of this. Uh, uh, second, that I have complemented my uh, title of my talk with diagnostic applications. Why? Because uh, to avoid misunderstandings, uh, that uh, this talk is not related to surgical and therapeutic applications, which are also medical applications, but uh, only to diagnostic applications. So. Uh, then I would introduce the main, <clears throat> the main content of my talk. First, I will introduce you with my university and uh, our biophotonics lab. And then a few words about RGB lasers, how are they designed and applied. Uh, then uh, some introduction to technology of uh, triple spectral line imaging and mapping of uh, skin chromophores, which we are developing here in Riga. Uh, some descriptions of uh, the designs of, of illumination by several lasers. Uh, then uh, I will show designs of several prototypes for local skin diagnostics and also about a prototype for large area skin diagnostics, which is developed right now in a running project. And finally, uh, some information about RGB laser illumination for endoscopy diagnostics. <clears throat> so let me start with my university, it's University of Latvia, uh, which uh, mm -hmm. uh, has been established uh, back in 1919. Uh, so we have 13 faculties, uh, more than 15,000 students. More than, uh, it's about 150 study programs, uh, 17 uh, research institutes, and more than 50 research fields. Uh, so our main building, historical building, it was built in 1862. That time it was uh, built for Riga Polytechnicum. In uh, uh, 1919, it was converted into the University of Latvia. And uh, now in Riga, we are developing a new academic center. Uh, two buildings are ready. Third building is uh, is uh, erected now. Uh, I am talking now from this nice building, uh, which is called Science Building of at University of Latvia. Uh, so, regarding biophotonics lab. Uh, so the laboratory was established back in uh, 1997, and uh, our basic uh, focus is uh, to develop uh, non-invasive methods, devices, and technologies for clinical diagnostics and monitoring, which could be affordable for end users uh, by exploiting optical features of uh, in vivo skin. So skin is our main target. Uh, still now, and we have three main uh, research lines. One is uh, uh, skin autofluorescence studies, uh, which include photobleaching effects, uh, also so-called skin photomemory effect, uh, parametric imaging of uh, photobleaching uh, rates, which uh, have some diagnostic pot potential for, for clinical applications, and also picosecond range, uh, range uh, kinetic studies, uh, which also mm, allows to estimate remitted photon pass lengths directly experimentally. So that's what we can call macro flame uh, fluorescence lifetime imaging. Uh, second research line is uh, related to skin diffuse reflectance spectroscopy. And uh, there are two modalities. One is uh, contact mode, using different fiber optic uh, contact probes. And the uh, other modality is non-contact imaging. And uh, that's exactly the topic of today's talk, uh, multispectral imaging, uh, which uh, 
is used for skin homochrome mapping and uh, uh, has potential for distant uh, skin assessment. And the third research line is uh, uh, related to photoplasmography. Uh, this is a technique uh, which uh, which uh, gives possibility to see um, skin blood pulsations without touching the skin or by touching skin with contact probes. So again, there are two modalities, contact uh, contact approach where we have developed some new modalities is bilateral, multi-site and multi-spectral uh, PPG, which is photoplasmography. And uh, over the recent 10 years, we are mainly focusing on uh, non-contact uh, photoplasmography imaging, which has also some nice clinical applications. For example, one is non-contact anesthesiology control. Uh, okay, that's a brief introduction. Uh, now, how about RGB lasers, uh, which is topic topic of today's talk. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, if we go to uh, internet and want to see uh, what is RGB lasers, uh, the first thing uh, we can get uh, we can get a explanation. RGB lasers are show laser systems. Uh, uh, with exactly three color modules, red, green, and blue. And it does matter if the color sources are uh, uh, DPSS uh, or, or OPSL or dyed laser modules or any other laser. But by combining the three colors, uh, we can get white light lasers. So that's the first ex explanation. And uh, the key uh, the key component or key element of such lasers uh, is a laser beam combiner. In fact, there are combined uh, three laser beams, uh, one blue, one green, one red. And usually they, they are beam splitters. It's, uh, it can be different designs. So one can be like this, that uh, there are three laser modules emitting uh, from uh, from three sides, and then there is a beam splitter, a beam combiner, and the output beam comprises all three uh, laser colors. So that's uh, physically it looks like this, but uh, also a very popular design is that uh, there, there is a beam splitter when one laser beam is so called the main laser beam, and uh, two other laser beams are just added. Again, by, by beam splitters, but we get output beam, which uh, can look white. But uh, usually such systems have also some uh, power adjustment uh, possibilities. It could be manual, it could be automatic. Uh, so we can adjust, uh, we can change uh, output power of each color. And uh, in result, in fact, we can get in the laser beam, we can get in practically any color by combining three colors and by uh, adjusting uh, output powers. And uh, there are quite a lot of uh, models uh, now on the market uh, for various applications. Uh, and uh, what is uh, maybe most interesting for, uh, for uh, applications uh, like ours is that uh, Mm. Output beam is well collimated. It means that it can be nicely coupled into optical fibers. And uh, so there are already several co commercial mo uh, models where uh, the fibers are uh, either uh, integrated uh, together with lasers. So it's, it's like a pigtail structure or Mm -hmm. or the laser can have uh, a connector uh, that uh, usually can be SMA, SMA connector uh, just to connect a uh, laser output beam uh, to the uh, optical fiber. So this is illustration right here, how it looks like. And so you see this uh, laser module can be 
can be adjusted. So there are three buttons, uh, one for each color. So you can just change uh, powers and change the output color. Uh, of course, it's interesting for all kinds of uh, displays, uh, color TV, uh, laser shows, and so on. Uh, but uh, our application uh, is uh, a little bit other. So our initial interest was uh, to, uh, to find or to have some uh, illumination source, uh, which comprises only three spectral lines. Uh, so one could be in, in, in blue region, one could be in uh, green, one, one could be in red, but uh, we don't care what kind of uh, light source it is. Uh, and why we need that, uh, we are developing a multispectral imaging modality, which is called, uh, we can call it multispectral line imaging, or uh, in this case, triple spectral line imaging, uh, where uh, this kind of uh, illumination, like RGB laser illumination, is very useful. So the basic idea is that uh, usually when we talk about uh, spectral imaging, uh, so we have devices uh, of uh, hyperspectral imaging or for multispectral imaging, but usually uh, the imaging is performed in frame of uh, some spectral band and the bandwidth uh, usually is uh, about 10, 20 nanometers. Sometimes it is more, but uh, usually it's not less than 10 uh, nanometers, uh, the bandwidth, <clears throat> which means that uh, it, depend, uh, it uh, determines uh, uh, spectral se selectivity of imaging. And this selectivity could be improved if we are just squeezing the uh, line, the bandwidth uh, down to single spectral line. So the idea is that we are moving from spectral band imaging to spectral line imaging. And in case of uh, three spectral lines, we can also uh, implement a single snapshot a capture of uh, those three spectral line imaging by, uh, by conventional RGB cameras. And there are three clear benefits. Uh, so one is uh, spectral selectivity. Uh, so, so it means that it could be increased for, increased for about two orders of magnitude, down to less than 0.1 nanometer. The second is that uh, imaging quality uh, is improved by a single snapshot because uh, when we talk about uh, in vivo tissues, uh, they usually move. So we are pressing so we can move and and in uh, conventional uh, conventional spectral imaging devices, uh, when the uh, spectral images are taken one by one sequentially, it takes time and uh, during that time actually there could be some movements which uh, blur the image. So with single snapshot, so we can avoid this effect. And third uh, advantage is that uh, it's much simpler and much faster to process uh, spectral images because then we don't have to uh, integrate uh, over the uh, spectral band of uh, illumination, but uh, we have just number uh, of, of the wavelengths, so numbers instead of integrals of the wavelength band. Uh, so this idea was, uh, Mm -hmm. proposed for patenting but more than 10 years ago, but that was just idea. We didn't know how to implement it at the first uh, moment. <clears throat> and uh, the in the case of three spectral line images, just uh, to explain more how it works, uh, if we have mm -hmm. RGB detector, so we, we can have in all mobile phones, we have colored cameras. The colored cameras have uh, three uh, detection bands. One is blue, one is green, one is red. And uh, uh, the colored image is composed from uh, images detected in those three, three bands. But those three bands can be also separated. And uh, if we take image under illumination of only three spectral lines, 
as shown here is one line, second line, then third line at say different wavelengths. Uh, then we can separate those one spectral line images, single spectral line images out of the uh, data of RGB image. And in that case, uh, we have three very well spectrally resolved uh, images, uh, spectral line images. And the next step uh, for clinical application uh, is that uh, if uh, we can analyze those uh, three spectral line images uh, in the sense that, uh, mm. uh, for example, if, uh, if we are imaging skin, uh, there are three main chromophores which are absorbing light. It's melanin, oxyhemoglobin, deoxyhemoglobin. And at each uh, spectral image, uh, each of those uh, chromophores uh, give a different contribution. Here we see that's for red line, for a green line, and for a blue line, it's different contributions. And uh, if we are using kind of updated or modified bell lambert law uh, with three equations, then we can uh, finally be able to uh, map distribution of those three chromophores in the skin. So that's uh, this modified uh, the chromophore model. Uh, so the idea is that uh, we, we write three equations for each wavelength. We have three fixed wavelengths. For each wavelength, we have a contribution of, uh, of each of, of three chromophores. Uh, and if there are any changes of concentration in the malformation, so what we see here, so we have some skin malformation. We don't know what it is, but uh, we can select some area inside this malformation, and we can select also some area uh, in the healthy skin uh, region, which is outside uh, this malformation. <clears throat> and then we can uh, solve system of uh, three equations where uh, delta C means uh, change of concentration of particular chromophore uh, inside this uh, malformation. So there are three chromophores, A, B, and C. And uh, uh, in result, actually, we can calculate uh, change, change uh, of uh, concentration of each chromophore just by, su by, by such uh, linear equation. So, so this is uh, the main approach, and uh, such calculation can be performed for each pixel inside the uh, inside the malformation, and for each pixel outside. And the result, we can get distribution map of uh, chromophore concentration changes in the malformation, and how it looks like in a in a normal skin. Uh, so that's the scheme how we process of those spectral line images. So first, we are just capturing imaging image, but under specific illumination uh, at three spectral lines. There are no other spectral components, only three fixed spectral lines. So then we can separate those three monochromatic or, uh, or single spectral line images. Uh, then uh, we can uh, segment uh, pathology region from the healthy skin region. Uh, then we can calculate uh, mean values of, from healthy skin and from uh, our selected region in the pathology. And finally, we can calculate distribution maps of uh, three chromophores in frame of our model. Of course, there are more than three chromophores in skin, but those three are as main chromophores. It's the melanin oxyhemoglobin, deoxyhemoglobin. So we can uh, calculate in result uh, distribution map, how those chromophore concentrations have, have changed inside the pathology we are looking at. So that's the main principle, how we are working for that. But as I said, at the beginning, we didn't know how to, how to, how to do that. But there are lots of problems 
or challenges, problems are for Europeans and challenges are from Americans, but anyway, uh, the, there are some of them. So one is how to ensure, ensure uniform illumination of the target area simultaneously by uh, several laser lines. Let's say three laser lines, but uh, we know that laser output beam is not uniform. So there is some distribution uh, Mm -hmm. And it's it's not a easy task to get uniform illumination simult simultaneously by all three laser lines or even more laser lines. So that's one question. Other question is, if we illuminate some targets with laser light, we always get laser speckles. There's some grains of, of laser, uh, which, which are caused by uh, laser light inter interference on the on the surface so and those grains uh, usually mm, uh, they spoil the image so so the image becomes grainy so we have to get rid of, of those grains somehow uh, the third question is uh, if we are using this technology briefly discussed before how to establish uh, what are relative sensitivities of uh, particular photo detector, which we are using uh, at each of those three wavelengths. Uh, because usually, okay, we, we have mobile phones, we have different cameras, but usually we don't get uh, those relative sensitivity curves because manufacturers usually don't like to give them. And uh, that means that uh, we have to measure them somehow uh, experimentally, so how to do that. Uh, it's needed for extraction of spectral line images. And of course, uh, if we can solve those questions and the next is, can this technology be applied for uh, diagnostic skin imaging and can it be applied for improved endoscopy imaging? Uh, so let's start with uniform illumination. So how we developed our first design was uh, mm, based on optical fiber illumination. And our idea was that uh, we used uh, three laser modules. Uh, this was blue module, green module, and uh, red module with SMA outputs. And uh, then we uh, developed a, a special uh, fiber assembly where uh, there, there are three fiber bundles. Each bundle consists of seven fibers, which are uh, densely packed together. And uh, each uh, seven fibers are integrated in SMA connector of fiber. And uh, other ends of those fibers are distributed uh, at illumination ring, so that there are the rand randomly distributed uh, 21 fiber output. Uh, so, so they are emitting uh, blue, green, or red light at different uh, points of, of this ring. Uh, then there is a diffuser to make illumination more uniform. Uh, inside the ring, there is a camera, CMOS camera, to take the image, which is connected to PC, computer. And uh, uh, there are also two uh, to polarizer system. One po polarizer is attached uh, to the input of camera, and the other one, which is orthogonal to the first one, uh, is uh, placed uh, after diffuser uh, to ensure that uh, skin is, is illuminated by polarized light, and such system uh, ensures that uh, we don't detect uh, specular reflection of skin, but uh, we detect uh, mainly diffuse reflection of uh, light, which has penetrated skin in some depths. And then after diffuse reflection, uh, the light comes back and is, is detected by camera. Uh, so it was a quite bulky design. Uh, it was done uh, somewhere back in, uh, in 2014 and uh, uh, some results are published in uh, 2015, but uh, we are not very satisfied with this design and we try to do something better. 
So the next design was based on a camera of a mobile phone and uh, attached to the illuminator. And this illuminator was uh, uh, has uh, has comprised uh, six laser modules, uh, uh, two of uh, each. Uh, actually, actually, there were uh, three couples of laser modules. Each couple emitted exactly the same wavelengths, and uh, the modules are placed in opposite sides of uh, of this cylinder. Uh, all the laser beams were directed to a specific uh, diffuser with conical reflecting uh, side surfaces and uh, with uh, diffusing part uh, right here and uh, and uh, a hole in the middle for camera of uh, of mobile phone uh, and uh, this diffusing part uh, third for uh, scattering of light and for diffused illumination of the skin uh, down uh, here actually on the bottom of, of the system. Uh, so this design appeared to be quite nice. So here we see the distribution uh, of intensity at uh, white light which is combined uh, of all three laser lines and it's for red light, for green light and for blue light. So the particular wavelengths are for red is 60, 659 nanometers, for green is 532, and for blue is 448 nanometers. And this system gave really quite nice, uh, quite, uh, quite nice results uh, in studies of uh, different uh, skin pathologies. And it was published in, uh, in 2017. And uh, one of the results presented here. So if we compare chromophore maps, which uh, are have been obtained from uh, different uh, uh, malformations of skin. So one is pigmented uh, nevus, one is seborrheic keratosis, one is, one is hemangioma. Uh, uh, this is a pigmented pathology, which means that uh, we can expect a melanin increase in pathology, and that's exactly what we what we got. That melanin concentration has notably increased, while uh, both hemoglobins uh, didn't change very notably. Something very similar we got for seborrheic keratosis, but for hemangiomas, which are vascular pathologies, which means that uh, the blood content is changing. So we, we got quite opposite results that oxyhemoglobin concentration sharply increased and the oxyhemoglobin correspondingly decreased and uh, melanin content uh, didn't change uh, very notably. Uh, so that's just one result, but uh, that's illustration how we how those uh, chromophore maps, uh, chromophore concentration change maps, uh, how they look like. And finally, we get back to RGB lasers with our third design, uh, where we use uh, this nice properly uh, property that RGB laser light can be launched into optical fiber. And if the optical fiber is not uh, usual or ordinary fiber, which just transmits light, but uh, we can also use so-called side emitting optical fibers uh, which are specially designed uh, to scatter the light uh, outside the fiber through the side surfaces uh, over the whole length of the fiber. So they, they are, they are so-called side emitting optical fibers and uh, uh, we developed uh, silica core side emitting fibers back in 1995. It was patented, uh, so they, they were and they can be still produced in Latvia in our manufacturing facility. But uh, what we discovered that uh, this kind of fiber is a very good tool for uniform illumination of target by uh, at least three uh, laser lines. It means that if you have RGB laser launched into such optical side emitting fiber, we can get very nice, very uniform illumination uh, simultaneously by all three laser lines. And that's exactly what, what we needed. 
uh, yeah, so this device was also uh, patented in, in our local, the, the local Latin patent, but it can be can be expanded to other to other patents. So, and this kind of design was uh, implemented in uh, one of our prototype devices. We have developed several of them, but uh, <clears throat> uh, this device uh, actually was one step ahead uh, after uh, after three spectral line imaging we tried uh, possibility of four spectral line imaging by using a, sp a special uh, four band uh, camera very advanced camera and uh, then correspondingly we could use four uh, laser lines for illumination so in addition to three rgb lines we added also 850 line from uh, near infrared laser. And uh, also in the design for illumination, uh, there are four um, laser, diode, laser diode emitting four or five or violet light uh, to excite uh, autofluorescence of skin. So all this is detected by camera. So, and we tried to make as compact design as possible to get uh, this kind of uh, four spectral line imaging plus uh, auto fluorescence uh, image. So uh, all, the result we get five images of skin malformation to analyze, which contains uh, really rich information uh, for uh, clinicians. Uh, so that's uh, how this device uh, looks like. So this is uh, mm -hmm. this will show what's inside. Uh, so we see this is this uh, four band uh, camera. So here we see uh, optical fibers. Uh, this is side, side emitting optical fiber and the emitting spiral is down here. So the fiber from one end is connected to RGB laser module, which is quite small, there's a few centimeters. And uh, at the other end, it, it is connected to 850 nanometer near infrared uh, laser. So in result, this side emitting fiber emits simultaneously four spectral lines uh, to uh, our target area, which is usually skin. And uh, mm -hmm. we can detect four spectral line images, plus we can detect out of fluorescence image. And then this set of five specific images can be further analyzed uh, for uh, diagnostic or diagnostics. So it's just one example. And uh, what's more specific actually to pay attention that uh, out of fluorescence of seborrheic keratosis at uh, four or five nanometer excitation. Uh, so seborrheic keratosis uh, is fluorescing very, very brightly. While uh, hemangiomas and dermal navy, they are not fluorescing, they are just absorbing. So that's the way how to uh, recognize seborrheic keratosis and how not to misdiagnose, misdiagnose it uh, with melanoma. So unfortunately, we had uh, very few uh, clinical trials because it was during uh, COVID time and uh, our, uh, our project, actually we were intending to have uh, uh, wide clinical measurements with the device, but uh, during COVID time, there were the restriction to to access to hospitals, and uh, and after that, our project finished. So the number of uh, clinical cases is not high, but at least uh, we we got confirmation that uh, the device is working proper properly. So and uh, concerning two other challenges, challenges how to remove speckles at uh, uh, spectral images and uh, how about relative photosensitivities. So the first challenge was mm, sold so that we are using a vibrating element in the illumination path. It doesn't matter, is it a kind of reflect reflecting uh, mm, illumination path or it is a side emitting fiber where illumination goes out of the fiber. 
So if we are trembling those elements somehow, uh, so vibrating with a, with a period which is, uh, let's say, five times smaller than the exposure time of, uh, of our imaging, which means that during expo exposure time, so there will be at least five vibrations. And during those vibrations, actually, those speckle patterns that are kind of smeared. So, and as a recorded spectral image, uh, we practically don't see uh, grains which are uh, which are just spoiling the image. So that's that was one successful approach. Another one was uh, how to detect uh, relative photosensitivities. Again, we found a solution and also patented it. The idea was that uh, we are just using white refer reference. It could be just white white paper. We illuminate the reference uh, from RGB laser via normal light guide, transmitting light guide. And uh, we can uh, switch on and switch or switch off each of the three spectral lines. <clears throat> then camera is taking pictures of this illumina illumination spot at each wavelength. And uh, as a light guide output, uh, we are measuring powers of each wavelength. And finally, uh, combining all these results, we can say what are uh, mm. relative uh, spectral sensitivities at our selected wavelength. If it's a RGB laser, so we can say, uh, we don't know all uh, detection curves of, of the camera, but we, we can surely say that uh, at these spectral lines, the relative sensitivities are as we are measured. So then uh, those main challenges uh, were met. And uh, so we can go ahead. And our next uh, next challenge, so to say, is uh, to find if uh, this technology can be applied for so-called full body imaging. So it's a new trend in dermatology that uh, uh, instead of uh, looking at each of skin malformation for dermatologists, it takes time and uh, and it's not, o not only time consuming, but also uh, it takes also, mm -hmm. of course, uh, it costs and uh, uh, it's, it's not very, very, very convenient. Uh, for dermatologists, it's very convenient if they can get uh, information uh, immediately uh, in one snapshot, let's say, for for the whole body. And especially if there are persons with, with a big number of malformations, so sometimes it's on the back, there could be some 50 or, or maybe even 100 small birthmarks and uh, Dermatologists should ins inspect each of them to be sure that there is no melanoma developing or something, something else. For that, uh, there are big devices developed like this in, in this slide. Uh, they have forty-six stereo vision pods from different sides under white light illumination, so they can take uh, immediately. Uh, 46 images, and then the idea is that uh, each uh, malformation <coughs> can be uh, properly examined uh, afterwards. So the patient's uh, time is very, very small, so, and the information is, is actually there's huge information for that. Uh, there's only one disadvantage that those devices are extremely uh, expensive. So it's somewhere in between 200,000 and half a million. And of course, uh, it's not affordable for uh, normal dermatologists. So it's affordable only for big hospitals and, and very rich clinics. Uh, so our idea was uh, to do something similar, but using our technology. Uh, by illumination of patient only by three spectral lines and uh, using uh, side-emitting optical fibers. And our first experiment looked like that. We just sticked 
uh, side emitting fiber on a uh, reflecting uh, plane. Uh, we launched the RGB laser, which was quite powerful, uh, one watt uh, power for each spectral line. So the, line, uh, the wavelengths were 450, 520, 600 nanometers. <clears throat> and uh, they said the emitting fiber at the end had a specific reflector, which uh, reflected laser light back. So ensuring a more uniform distribution of side emission over the whole length of fiber. And uh, we used uh, uh, quite a, a high resolution uh, RGB camera, 61 megapixel. And uh, that's, uh, that's the first result. That's, there are two very small malformations, uh, which can be detected by camera and uh, uh, the size of uh, each malformation is about uh, one to two millimeters, so very small. But anyway, we get some some spot of malformations. But uh, at the first sight, actually, we, we, we can't say anything about uh, what is in there, so what kind of malformations they are. But uh, when we do chromophore mapping with our, our methodology, uh, then we clearly see that uh, this uh, Left side malformation, this one uh, has typical distribution of chromophores where melanin uh, is uh, dominant and both hemoglobins are not changing very notably. So we can say that uh, presumably this one is navus, pigmented pathology. And uh, when we go back to the other one, uh, which is also very small, uh, looks very similar, but after mm, image processing, we, we can say that melanin is not changing uh, too much, but uh, oxyhemoglobin is rapidly inc increasing and uh, the oxyhemoglobin is decreasing, uh, which uh, leads to the conclusion that most probably it is uh, vascular pathology or hemangioma. So it's just uh, first results. Uh, the next step was uh, to develop a device which could be clinically useful. And uh, that's our, our result. The idea is that uh, we place this camera inside a spiral of side emitting fiber. The side emitting fiber total length is 60 meters here. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, this uh, uh, illuminator uh, together, actually uh, behind there is a laser head and uh, behind is a camera. So all the system can move up and down uh, <clears throat> automatically. Everything is, uh, is uh, managed by computer outside this uh, tent. The tent is just uh, to screen uh, uh, patient uh, from the ambient light to ensure that only those three spectral lines are used for illumination. So, and we have small video of how it looks like. So that's the patient, uh, that's the operator. Uh, actually, the doctor is sitting outside this, this tent. The tent is closed, of course. And uh, then the first image is taken. It's upper part of the body. Then uh, all the system moves down. Uh, reaching the lower point, uh, one more image is taken. So the first image is for upper part of the body, uh, fr front part of the body. Second image is from the front part of uh, uh, front part of the <clears throat> bottom part of the body. Uh, then patient uh, turns around for eight uh, for uh, 180 degrees, and uh, two more images are taken. Uh, of the upper part of the back and upper part of the legs. So that's also kind of modification of full, bo full body imaging. Altogether, it takes about one minute, not too long. It's affordable for patient. So, and uh, at the moment we are, uh, we are starting uh, clinical measurements. Uh, so we are still waiting for ethical approval. So there are there is some discussion, but I think that in the next few weeks we will start uh, real measurements with this device. 
So our feeling is that everything is running. So we just have to collect results and try try to understand uh, how how good or how bad they are. Uh, then uh, going to endoscopy, I also uh, moved to a new field. So so far we have studied only skin, but now we are also moving to studies of mucosa uh, by endoscopic imaging. Uh, so, and the main idea is uh, to replace uh, usual illumination uh, in endoscopy, which is some kind of white light source. It could be xenon lamp or it could be some uh, uh, powerful LEDs, but white LEDs, it's usually just white light. Uh, to replace this uh, conventional white light with uh, uh, a three spectral line illumination, which uh, in combination also gives a white light. So for doctor, it's more or less the same, which kind of illumination it is. But uh, if we uh, detect uh, the images by cameras, the camera is uh, placed here, so it's not shown now. Uh, <clears throat> then uh, at such uh, three spectral line uh, illumination, we can uh, get definitely much more information about uh, mucosa and uh, di different uh, pathologies of mucosa. So, so what we uh, what we use in this case, we use uh, a s a smaller power RGB laser. So it's uh, hundred milliwatt for each spectral line, and it's adjustable. So uh, typically, is a uh, light emission at uh, emission power at the output of endoscope uh, is typically about two milliwatt for all three lines together. So we concluded that it is much less than than uh, illumination created by standard illumination sources of the endoscope. Uh, actually, we measure this illumination. Uh, so it was 5,600 locks at 10 millimeter distance. Uh, and uh, again, so we are now starting uh, clinical trials with such equipment. Uh, we have a uh, partner clinic, which are very interested to start such uh, kind of uh, uh, measurements. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, we are in the stage of ethical protocol in this case. Uh, one more thing uh, in this uh, system, we are using our developed spectral reduction uh, methodology. So um, uh, we are uh, using a vibromotor, which uh, which we have in uh, in every smartphone. This vibromotor, um, in our case, it was vibrating with 100, uh, 100 hertz frequency. And uh, so there are two images. One is for when uh, nothing uh, nothing is done, and on the right side we see how the image looks when when we uh, are using this uh, uh, vibro motor. So so we see the laser speckles are just disappearing. Uh, <clears throat> so that's briefly uh, our first steps. Uh, in uh, our new project, the next steps are for endoscopy. Actually, we have to make sure about all the safety aspects uh, for mucosa. And uh, it's it's a topic uh, really not easy to find, but but we hope that we will get some laser, laser safety limits for mucosa. Uh, for skin, there is plenty of information, but uh, uh, for mucosa, Mm, it's just just uh, how to find them, and uh, of course we have to develop specific algorithms for processing those spectral line images, which are uh, which we get uh, from uh, mucosa. Uh, and uh, from the point of dermatoscopy, so we we have to develop more software and to examine this new automatic four-stage full-body spectral line imaging prototype. Uh, and the future studies, as I said, so we just have to clinically validate this methodology and both prototypes uh, for 
hopefully improved optical diagnostics of skin amyocosmic pathologies, and they also could include cancers. Uh, so to summarize my talk, so this uh, triple spectral line, triple laser line imaging technology was proposed and developed for improved diagnostics and dermatology endoscopy. Uh, several proof of concept prototypes for examination of uh, centimeter size skin areas by 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 uh, this technique uh, were developed and tested. So recently, two RGB laser systems have been exploited for three wavelengths illumination at uh, 450, 520, 638 nanometer uh, illumination. So one is uh, high power, uh, one wattage uh, channel, and the uh, other one is lower power, 200 milliwatt, maximum power for each channel, but it can be lowered down to a few milliwatts. Uh, and so viability of this approach for large area skin imaging with subsequent map mapping of uh, chromophore content changes uh, <coughs> was confirmed. So, and uh, so looks like we are able to distinguish between pigmented and vascular lesions by our image processing and the prototype setup has been mounted and uh, laboratory tested. Uh, next, the functioning RGB endoscopy setup comprising RGB laser, vibro motor for specular removal, uh, removal, fibro endoscope, and color photo camera has been assembled. So, further studies are in, pro in progress. So, this project runs until November next year, and some recent results have been published. So, you can find them in, in this paper. Um, okay, thanks. That's it for my talk. I I would acknowledge uh, support of the project uh, funded by Latvian Council of Science. So that's the name of the project. And uh, thank you for attention. Thank you.